Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we have something special, or I consider it to be very special anyway. This is my Rolex 16610 LV, or most commonly known as the Kermit. Now, this watch basically came out to celebrate 50 years of the Rolex Submariner. And so it was originally first released in 2003 and ran all the way up to 2010. But believe it or not, it wasn't actually a, a big seller. Not everyone liked the green bezel on there. Now, I, t I can tell you, you know, a story about this because the simple fact is the guy who brought this originally, because I brought this used in 2010, it was about two years old then, and the gentleman who brought it originally got this from Rolex. You can see it's nice little tin here. Inside this tin, we have a black bezel. I say, that's how much people weren't keen on this green bezel. And you can see there, that's what a black LV looks like. Now you may think that just looks like any old sub. Now, to a degree, you are correct, but Again, it's, it's for subtle differences. Not only did the LV have this lovely green bezel, but also it had a completely different dial. Now, this was the first Submariner to have what's called the Maxi dial on there. What I mean by that is the hour markers are actually fatter than the standard um, black Submariner of the time, and the hands were also chunkier. Now, I actually had a Sea Dweller at the same time back in 2010, and the Sea Dweller had the much thinner hands and the smaller hour markers, and it actually put me off it and I ended up selling it and just kept this one. Now, this, I would say, is my favorite Rolex Submariner to date. Now, I'm lucky enough to have the old Red Sub, the 1680, and I also used to have the um, successor to this, the 116610, the ceramic model. And I didn't like it. Basically, the crown guards were a lot chunkier, the lugs were a lot fatter, and you lost this lovely form, the way the bracelet on this one just simply blends into the watch head a lot better, I feel. And I say, this is my favorite Submariner. And not only is it my favourite Submariner, it's also, I would say, yeah, it's my favourite watch in my entire collection. I really do like this watch. I think it's just a simple, stunning, lovely watch. It's, you know, it's not pretentious in any way. It's quite a slim watch. It's not a massively oversized watch screaming, look at me. The only outlandish feature is the green bezel. You know, I really think that Rolexes are very quite subdued kind of models. They're basic models anyway, before you add any diamonds. They're not particularly screaming, look at me, not like a lot of other brands. So this would be, I say, is my favorite watch. Now, obviously being a Submariner, we have um, Sapphire Crystal. We've got 300 meters of water resistancy. The actual caliber, in this watch, the movement is the 3135. Now, it's one of their longest, you know, longest running movements. So it's a real rock solid movement, chrono you know, chronometer spec, obviously 48 hours, 31 joules. It has the parachrome hairspring, which gives it more shock resistance and temperature resistance. And it's just such a solid watch. The bezel action, as I always do, let's just, 120 click. Not much back play at all. Very positive. A little bit hard to grip, if I'm to be honest, a little bit, but it works lovely. The actual loom on this watch is also um, top rate. It really is good. Let me just put a quick torch on here, get an idea. And if I wear this one in the night, I, I always put a little torch on just before I go to sleep for a couple of seconds, and this will glow all night long. You can read the time all the way through the night. The case on this, I say it's just a nice slim, you know, slim case. It's got all polishing on the side. We have the 
brushwork on top here. Quite saturnized, really. Now, it just feels right. In typical Rolex Submariner fashion, there is nothing on the back. In fact, I think I've still got the sticker on there because I actually had this watch serviced back in, I think it was around about 2018. So this one had actually, yeah, has actually been back to Rolex for a full service. Now, the bracelet on this one is fully brushed, which makes it incredibly easy to you know, remove any marks if you are to pick up any on here. The clasp, now this is where a lot of people don't like. Simple folded steel clasp. Now, yes, it would be nice, I suppose you could say, if it had the later glide lock bracelet, like fitted on this SD4K, where you can adjust it on the fly. But this feels a lot chunkier in comparison. If I put these together, let me just do that. There we go. You get the idea how much bigger that clasp actually is. Don't get me wrong, it is in theory technically superior, you know, the actual clasp, even down to the links on this one. I'll drop a picture in, it's got hollow center links. On this one, it hasn't. But for all its kind of, you could, I, 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 it's hard to call them really flaws, it just feels right. On the wrist, I think this watch is just one of these where it just feels absolutely spot on. Now, the actually getting back to the clasp, I should have showed the dive link extension. Now, a lot of people still don't know this. What you have, even some of the owners, what you have down here is a small circle. Now, if I press that circle, this happens and it allows it to release and you have your dive link extension. But yeah, not everyone knows about it. So you put it back in, press down and on that circle again, and that's it, it's in. But yeah, you have a small circle. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. It is actually quite hard to see. There we go, there's a circle on that link and you just press there. So bits of clay on the inside of this. There we go, so zoom out and then press in. And it's very solid. It's, you know, in comparison to nowadays, you've got to remember these are older watches. These spanned from the 90s and it just works. It just feels right. Now, some of the differences with the Kermit range was obviously if you had one of the early models, I think it's Y serial, you'd have what is called a Fat 4. Now, this one, I don't have a Fat 4. So if I was to have a Fat 4, you can add another several thousand pounds on the price of this watch, which is absolutely crazy. And a lot of people think it's stupid. But these are subtle details you look for. When you have a watch which they all look the same apart from a subtle detail, that subtle detail can be enough to really bump up the, you know, the price of what someone, I'm not gonna say value, but the price to what someone is willing to pay for it. Now, let me put some on my wrist and you can see. I've gone all Rolex today. In fact, I'm wearing a mill gas today. Take that off. Now, my wrist size is seven inches, or a fraction over. You can get an idea how it looks. And there you go. Now, I don't think that is too small at all. In fact, I think it's pretty damn spot on. As I say, this is, it just feels right. It's like that everyone's got on a pair of shoes they put on, it just feels right when they put it on. And that's how I feel with this Rolex. It just, everything about it, it's, you know, not too heavy, perfect size. I really do like it. And to me, this could, you know, they are going up in value to be fair, these ones. And I've got a feeling, you know, they're just gonna carry on doing that. I know lots of people say the Rolex bubble will burst, but now you simply can't get these watches anymore. You know, I believe they still will, you know, but there you go. So that's just my quick walk around of my Rolex Kermit. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. All the best. Take care. Bye.